In this video, we're going to drive the moment generating function for a logistic distribution, and then we're going to use that to derive the mean and the variance of a logistic distribution. I have another video called Mean and Variance of a Logistic Distribution, which is actually pretty informative. If you haven't seen it, I'd really recommend it. So here the density of a logistic distribution is this, where S is positive and X and mu are real numbers. Now the moment generating function by definition, we're going to call M of T, which is the expected value of E to the TX. And that says you plug in e to the tx times the density and integrate it over all possible values. Now let's make a substitution change. u is equal to this quantity. And basically it's, it's this inner piece here. It's 1 over this. You know, that hints the minus 1. So then the derivative becomes this. You know, the minus 1 comes out. You know, then it's minus 2 and then and it's the chain rule. And you get this here. Now, the nice thing about this is actually it's this whole piece here is now du. And if we use this first piece, we can back solve for x and we get this. So minus s log of 1 minus u over u plus mu. Now, we substitute these back in here and we get this. So remember, this is all part of du, and then we stick this x right there, and that's what this is. Um, oh, 0 to 1, if we look at this piece here, so if we plug in infinity, this goes to 0, which leaves 1 over 1. You know, 1 raised to the minus 1 is 1 over 1, which is that. And then if you plug in minus infinity, this goes to infinity, but remember it's in the denominator, so 1 over infinity means it goes to 0. So this is how we get the range. Now let's distribute this t in, and this t going to this mu, can, you know, then the add of components is like the product, so that can come out e to the t mu. Then, um, the, the minus TS can be taken up here, and then the E and the log cancel, and we're just left with this. And of course, we're still integrating 0 to 1 du. Now, this we think of as in two pieces, 1 minus mu, or u, raised to the minus st, and this denominator is raised to the minus st, but when we bring it up, it becomes positive. <clears throat> now, what we're going to do is multiply this by a well-chosen one, which is this beta function. So multiply and divide by the same beta function, but then this is integrating a beta distribution over its entire range, and since it's a density, this becomes one. And we're just left with this piece here. And this is it, this is the moment generating function. And, and one note is that these uh, exponents you know, here, not the minus one, have to be positive. So when you kind of back solve for t, t has to be in this range in order for these to converge. So this is it, this moment generating function. Now let's use this to derive the mean and the variance. So I, I just rewrote the <coughs> moment generating function. And to remind you what the beta function is, it's this. So beta of a b is gamma of a times gamma of b over gamma of a plus b. <clears throat> so now when we take the derivative of this, because we're finding the mean, um, it's the derivative of this, which is this, and the chain rule, we get an extra mu times this. Then it's this times the derivative of this. And we're just going to call it b prime. You can kind of tell I started writing it out, but it's too long. And so in the next step, we're going to define what B prime is. So B prime is the derivative of this beta function with respect to T. Now let's just plug in what the, the beta function is. Remember using this. So it is 1 plus ST, 1 minus ST, and then when you add those together, the ST and the minus ST cancel, and you just get gamma of 2. And gamma of 2 is 1. 
So we can ignore that and we're taking the derivative of this. So then it becomes the derivative of this and then times the chain rule we get an S times this and then it's plus this times the derivative of this and then we get the chain rule and and that's it so now the next step um, we want to take this der first derivative or the derivative of beta evaluate at t equals zero and and uh, this will become apparent why we're doing it in a second okay so that says plug in zeros here so here we get uh, the first derivative of gamma evaluated at one which is the negative uh, euler mascheroni constant of course, the S just comes down, and then gamma evaluated at 1 is 1. Gamma, remember when we plug in t equals 0, that goes to 1. Gamma of 1 is 1. Uh, the first derivative of a gamma evaluated at 1 is the negative mass euler mascheroni constant, gamma, and then that's minus S. So here we have minus gamma S plus gamma s, so that's zero when we evaluate it at t equals zero. So now back to our original, we, we want to find the expected value of x, which is the first derivative of the moment journey function evaluated at t equals zero. So this is the first derivative, and let's see if I can scoot this down a little bit. So we have, we have mu, put zero there, that's one, Beta of you know zero, a one, the beta function evaluated at one one is just one, right? Gamma of one, gamma of one over one is one, and then e to the zero is one, and then this first derivative of beta function evaluated at zero was zero, so that goes away, and we're left with mu, and that is the mean of a logistic distribution. Now to find the variance. We need to evaluate the second moment. And as a reminder, the second moment is the second derivative of the moment journey function evaluated at t equals zero. So what we want to do is take the derivative of this. And I'm re-showing it to you because we have two terms here and we'll have to use the product rule, which will get two terms out of it. And then here we have two terms. So we'll get two terms. So we'll get four terms total when we take the derivative of this. And I'm running out of real estate to keep it on the screen. So you just have to trust me on this. So you, the derivative of the first term, you get the e back and then an extra mu. That's what the mu squared is, times the second term. And then it's this first term times the derivative of the beta function. And then we get the um, derivative of the first term and then the chain rule we get extra mu times that second term and then the first term e to the t u times the derivative of the first derivative so you get the second derivative now let's um, we know we know how to handle the beta function and we looked at the first derivative of the beta function up here and evaluated at zero so the new one is this second derivative. So let's look at that. So the first derivative of the beta was this, right? So we have two terms with t in it, right, the product. So when we take the derivative, we're going to get two more terms, and we're going to get two more terms here. So there's going to be four terms total, where there's only two here. So... Um, Let's see if we can keep that in the screen. So the derivative of, I'm going to put this with it. So the derivative of this is we get S times the derivative of this, but the chain rule, we get another S. That's why there's an S squared times the second term. And then it's plus this first term, which is derivative of 1 plus S, S times the derivative of this, but the chain rule, we get a minus S. That's why it's a minus S squared. Now this term um, let's assume this s is with this although it doesn't matter so the derivative of this um, and then we get an extra s that's why there's minus s squared times the second term and then it's the first term times the derivative of the second but then the chain rule we get an extra s and that's why it is 
minus s times minus s plus s. So when we evaluate this at zero, so um, beta double prime evaluated at t, so let's do this, that we get to s. This piece right here is actually uh, gamma squared plus pi squared over six, where this is the Euler mass Groening constant. Now we're not gonna do that derivation, and maybe in a follow-up video I will, so you'll just have to look up what that is. And then gamma at one is one. So we get S squared, and this is uh, minus gamma, the Euler mass Groening constant, the same thing here. Uh, S squared, let me do this. And then this uh, was the its first derivative evaluated one is minus gamma, that's minus gamma S squared one. And then the second derivative evaluated at one because we're plugging in zero. That's the gamma squared plus pi squared over six. Now we get some cancelizations. This cancels with this and, and this one. And then, and then we get this plus that, which is, you know, and then we got an S squared out front, which is S squared pi squared over three. Now, that's the beta function evaluated at zero. So now we need to evaluate the moment generating function evaluate at zero. So let's see if I can bring it back up. So this is it. Oop. So we get mu squared, because that's one and one. And then whatever, you know, this evaluated zero was zero, so that goes away. That one was zero, goes away. E to the TU is one, so it stays. And then beta double prime evaluated at zero, um, oh, was, was this, mu squared. You know, S squared, pi squared over three, right? So I might have been pointing at the wrong term. But this is the second derivative evaluated at zero, right? And then this simplifies to that. Now the variance is then becomes simple. The variance is the expected value of x squared minus the mean squared. Plug in what we know for this, minus the mean squared. Those cancel, and that's the variance. And that's actually what we derived in the other video, mean and variance of a logistic distribution. Well, this video was requested by a YouTuber called uh, Kieran Kieran, or, and pardon me if I butchered that name. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.